Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lesson we will be looking at uh, part one of nuclear transformations. So this is going to be done in three parts. So first we're going to take a look at the basic concepts um, involved in nuclear transformation. So first we have to talk about nuclear stability. What is stable? What is unstable? So we've talked about isotopes in the past. Isotopes are variations of a same element. Um, they have the same number of protons, but a different amount of neutrons, so therefore their mass is different. You have an example here with carbon. So carbon has uh, always six protons, right? But can have six neutrons or seven neutrons or eight neutrons. Okay, so these are isotopes of carbon because they have a different mass, because they have a different amount of neutrons. Now, if you have an isotope of any given element that is very large, such as carbon-14, so this is relative to the size of the atom, so this nucleus is a little bit too large for the size of carbon. There's too many particles in it. So it's very difficult for the nucleus to stay together. There's too many forces repelling. So the protons are repelling each other, but there's also the new the neutrons in there. It's too crowded. So it makes it unstable. So what do atoms do when they are unstable? Well, they will go through what we call nuclear decay. There's different types of um, nuclear uh, decay that can occur. And we're gonna take a look at a few. So what happens is there is radioactivity when this occurs. Okay, so radioactivity, it says it here, it's the process in which an unstable atom, such as carbon-14, will transform itself into either one or several smaller atoms, but that are more stable. So it can do that in various ways. We're going to talk about them in a moment. But those types of variations are called either alpha, beta, or gamma. We will also talk about fission and fusion in a subsequent lesson, but for today we're just going to talk about alpha, beta, and gamma. So first if we look at alpha radiation, so the symbol for alpha radiation is this over here. It's a little bit like an infinity symbol, but it, that is not quite complete. So you only have half and a bit. Um, so you have here an animation that shows you alpha decay. I will comment further on it in a second, but let's just take a look now. So we have uranium-238 that is unstable, and uranium-38 will then expel a nucleus that is like the nucleus of helium. So it doesn't come with the electrons, it's not an actual atom of, of helium, it's what we call an alpha particle, but it resembles, in terms of composition, it resembles the nucleus of a helium atom. But again, it's only the nucleus, the nuclear part, okay? So by losing two protons and two neutrons, because you can see here two is the atomic number, four is the mass, so you've got two protons and two neutrons, two white particles, two blue particles. By losing four particles, uranium is no longer uranium. We know that the number of protons determines the nature of the element. So uranium minus two protons gives us actually thorium, Th, which has a mass of 234. Let me show you using the next slide. Okay, so you have here the actual equation. So uranium-238, so that's the mass, with the atomic number of 92, then turns into thorium, which uh, symbol TH, with atomic number of 90 and a mass of 234. So how did it go from 238 to 234 and 92 to 90? Well, that's because an alpha particle was produced or was expelled. An alpha particle has an atomic number of 2 and a mass of 4. So if you look at the math of it, 4 plus 234 gives me 238. 2 plus 90 gives me 92. It makes sense and it has to be that way because of the law of conservation of matter. The reactant side in terms of atomic number and mass has to be equal to the product side in terms of atomic number and mass. Okay, so you always have to make sure that these numbers add up to this and this number also adds up to these two, for example. 
So again, during an alpha decay, a nucleus of helium is produced, which is an alpha particle. There's no electron attached to this. And because this is expelled, the nature of this atom changes. In this example, it becomes this one, okay? Now let's take a look at beta decay. First we're going to take a look at the animation. So in a beta decay we have a neutron that spontaneously turns into a proton. Now because protons and neutrons are not exactly the same, they're very similar but they're not exactly the same in terms of mass, there is a small particle that resembles an electron that gets expelled in the process. So let's take a look. So we have again the proton the neutron that becomes a proton, and there's a beta particle, very similar to an electron, that gets expelled. And I don't know if you notice, but the color of the particle changes because the neutron becomes a proton. So I'll just run it one more time. So white to blue. So the neutron, which is white, becomes blue because it becomes a proton, and the small difference in mass between the two is what is kicked out over here, and it's called a beta particle, and it looks somewhat like an electron. So if we take a look at the equation, we have TH234 that becomes PA234, right? Because the masses are very similar, but the number of proton changes, right? So 90 to 91. Why? Because one neutron became a proton. So essentially there was a gain of one proton, so this has to go up by one, but the mass should not change because we didn't, the, the atom did not lose a proton or a neutron, it just lost a small amount of matter, which is not a proton, not a neutron, just a little tiny bit, just like it shed a little bit of skin type of thing. So that little particle, which is a beta particle, looks like an electron. Then we have gamma radiation. So gamma radiation, this is a symbol for gamma. And you might have noticed, I'm just going to go back for a second, for beta, actually let me go back here, for beta it's like a, the letter B, but, um, well it's the Greek letter, so it's a little bit fancier, but this is a symbol for beta radiation. Now gamma is a little bit like the infinity, but uh, upside down, so it's not, it's an incomplete, so it's like uh, a curvy uh, symbol like this. Now gamma radiation is just energy that is released during the process of alpha radiation or beta radiation. So these transformations always come, always release energy, and that energy is called gamma radiation. If you have questions, don't forget, you know what to do, post them in the section underneath, and I'll see you around. See you soon.